Here at AirVenture, we're in the Fun Fly Zone, a great name for this area, and we're going to look at some airplanes that I know are fun to fly. In years past, I've gotten in a number of the Minimax uh, team aircraft of the day, but there's been a lot of changes. Talking with Dave Cooper here, he's going to bring us up to speed now for the new company, uh, uh, Team Minimax. And uh, Dave, uh, welcome to AirVenture again. Thank what you. are we standing in front of here? Which of the models here are we standing in front this of? This here is our Supermax. This is the latest model we brought out. Uh, it has a full VW, 72 horsepower, wow. uh, 2180, and we use a Hummel engine. Um, it comes complete with everything, buck paint, engine, prop, uh, and all the materials to build it for 16.5. Can't beat that on the market. With a four-stroke engine. With a four-stroke engine. And I'm kind of looking at it here. You got a little dummy in there that must be one of your old buddies or something that didn't make it too far. But uh, he keeps monkeying around. I can't get him to do nothing. <laughs> but what I see in here that he doesn't show very well is this kind of a big guy cockpit. This, this is, is not the tight is, little thing I sort is, of remember. This is the widest version. It's 28-inch wide cockpit. Uh, it'll carry a 350-pound pilot. Wow. And we wanted to accommodate the larger guy that could not get into the light sport ultra, um, era and we brought a, a model that they could do that. Now this one's going to fall in the experimental amateur built class I'm yes, guessing. Yes. Be partly because of that, partly because of the engine and so forth. Correct. Okay, but still an excellent, you've always, team has always been known for having very economically priced aircraft that people can actually build and this is a wood airplane. It's all wood and fabric airplane. Uh, we try to keep in Wayne Eisen, the original designer's concept, minimum cost, maximum fun. <laughs> well, he, Wayne did a lot of great work and uh, I'm pleased as punch that it's still out here and you're doing it, Dave, so thank you for keeping it going. Uh, what kind of, on, an air, on this particular airplane, and I know people's skills vary a lot, but typically what would be a build time in hours that uh, folks this, would have? This model here, they're looking 400 to 500 hours depending on their building skills um, but it, too it, bad. It, it's it's relatively similar to our other models this one just has a little bit more when it starts getting into the bigger engines uh, on the engine mounting and stuff to, and building the cabin heat and carb heat and things like that so there's a little bit a more. few more details on this particular one but we'll go look at another one that might be an even easier build is that right Dave we have some very easy build ones. all right why don't we go have a look at one of the other guys that you got out here some so I kind of got a smile on my face because we asked you, Dave, how many models did you have? And you had to turn around and count yourself. You've got so many models, you had to count them yourself even though you built them. Yes, what, what was the count up to when the last you got them all? We now, we're up to nine different models <laughs> uh, uh, that we're carrying now. And everything from your ultralight version all the way up to the light sport amateur build. So you can still do a part 103 aircraft for those that want that? Yes. And, uh, and what engine would you typically recommend on those? We use the uh, Hearth. F33, 28 okay. horsepower, and they have the option of uh, you can get, getting that with an electric start and still make ultra lightweight. Is that right? So that's cool. And one of my old favorites, I think maybe I've flown just about all the uh, uh, Mini Maxes from previous era. One of my favorites all along was the airplane I figured you got on, not in. And I'm in that now. You are, what am I sitting in? You're sitting in our, our laser cut version of the. Uh, air bike, which is now on uh, Aero Max. Aero Max, because and you kind of, uh, the Aero bike, uh, the, the old uh, uh, air bike, kind of looked like it because it was all just aluminum, uh, steel fuselage and whatnot. Yes. And, and uh, looked we, more like a bicycle. This looks more like an airplane. Looks more like a plane, but it's what we call our Harley in the sky. Harley in the sky. Well, I love it. I mean, you're going to get plenty of airflow here. And, Good view. And you got a great view. I, this one charmed me as much as any of the ones you had. And I'm so glad you got to continue to come out. But you said a word there that I want to go back to. Laser cut. Yes. Tell me what that means relative to this airplane. What what that means is the build time is just cut down tremendous because all the plywood that's used in the construction is labeled with an etching that we use and the parts are cut out so it's like putting a puzzle together. Is it cut out with a laser? It's cut out with a laser. Now, you know, I mean, I've heard of laser cutting, of course, every industry seems like they use some element of it, but I never really thought of that relative to wood like it. I don't know, set it on fire or something. Well, stupid have, like that for me to say. We actually have a sample up here we can uh, maybe do a snapshot of and, and show you what it looks like when it's already done in the raw stage. 
Um, but that would really quicken the build time, wouldn't it? To it, not have to cut all those you, parts you out. You can build one of these kits down to 250 hours. Is that right? And uh, the uh, Aero Max now. The Aero Max. The Aero Max you're calling it today in the new streamlined form. And, and the other 250 feature, hours, that's probably talking of the know, other, a, few, a few months and you got it done. Yes. The other feature is all the hardware is machined for you. So there's no more. Uh, so no real fabrication. No then. real fabrication. It's a bolt together, glue together operation. Great stuff, Dave. That's uh, excellent. Let's go have a look at one more. Okay. So now we've come to another one, and uh, one of the one of the nine in the fleet of uh, Mini Maxes today, and uh, we're standing right by the Hearth F33 engine that you use on many of your models, correct? Three different models that we use it on. The 1100, which is what this model is, which is the original design, and the 1030R, and also the 1030F, and the 1700 HiMax. And what do those numbers mean? Are they relevant in some way, Dave? They're relative, only in the model design uh, that we categorize them uh, to let us know what what model that they're. It's just a to reference build. number. It's a reference. Of. Okay, it's not a weight thing or something else. Not a weight thing. Okay. Um, so I'm looking down here, and I can see uh, the starter motor. Uh, I can see the battery is what I'm looking at, the, and uh, the so this is an electric here. start. This has electric start and a pull start, so you can actually start this one both ways. All right. So you land in a field, and you somehow let your battery go dead on you. You got a way to get it going anyway, and fly back home. Right. That's and pretty cool to have both on. And the, the real particular item on this that is unique to Team Minimax, Team Minimax has always been a tail dragger aircraft. Now, if you and look I see down this below, one is not. We so. converted this one over to a Trimax because we had customers that said, I'm scared of a tail dragger. I'm worried about ground loop. So we wanted to take that scaredness out away from them. So. Sure. Well, you know, I understand because so many people now in the last couple of generations of U.S. society have learned how to fly in a 150, 172, whatever it is they learned how to fly in, or any number of uh, ultralights or light sport, they're all nose wheel, which is great. We understand why nose wheels work well for a new pilot, but tail draggers are pretty sweet, and everybody oh, ought to try it. I love a tail dragger. But, but you know, and I can I, see the smile I, on your I, face I, I revealing that. I to accommodate everybody, so this was one of the ways of... Great, because this is this is, an air, this is an airplane that loves a grass field. Yeah, it loves a grass field. So, uh, on, on the whole, whole line of them, uh, where where would this one fit in? And what I'm really getting at here is on the... We showed we looked at the Aero Max, it's really short, 250 hour build time. We looked at the... Uh, already forgot the name of the larger one, the big boy airplane. Super Max. Super Max. Got new names I gotta learn here. And that one's uh, 500 hours or so. This one's 200 to 400 hours. And that's the way most of our kids are dependent on your build uh, qualifications. Um, Somebody has done one, one once before, probably knock it out in a couple hundred hours? And usually in a couple hundred hours. Do you um, do any kind of quick build kit for people? We offer several quick build options. Okay. Options. How does that work, Dave? What we do is we took the laser cut gussets from the Aeromax and offer that as an option to add that to your kit and for a very low cost and be able to be able to build your ribs a lot faster by not having to take the time to cut all them gussets out. Uh, that's one way and then we also offer pre-built ribs so oh, okay. that we build the ribs for you at the factory and now you, all you have to do is assemble your spars and add your compression anti-drag and your uh, D-tubes and your ailerons and now your wings are done usually in a couple weeks. So how much does a quick build shave off the top of the build time approximately? Anywhere, anywhere from 100 to 150 hours. Oh goodness, so that really cuts it down a lot then. You can get the, you can get a quick build, uh, any one of the Minimax line that you do that with, uh, pretty quick, like a summer or something. I've been able to build a Minimax in six months. Six months, okay. Excellent. And test line. You, using that stuff. And test line. So paint. Avionics, whatever, an engine, the whole bit. Yes. All right, very cool. Very cool indeed. How many Mini Maxes are flying worldwide? We're well over 4,000. 4,000. You know, so that makes you one of the more successful kit producers, you and the folks that preceded you with this brand, uh, in the whole space. I mean, there's not too many that have ever gotten to that number. And, a handful. And, and a lot of people that have got into the Mini Max or learned about the Mini Max 
and have gone up into general aviation usually come back from the <laughs> I, I'm guilty of that. You're, you're one of them, huh? <laughs> I did it myself. <laughs> well, I, I'm not surprised because you keep popping up with that nice smile and uh, this is kind of an airplane that inspires that sort of thing. I and know. it's fun to fly. Great. They can buy the kit or they, we even have our kits broke down into sub kits to help the cost along the way. Um, so you can buy a, a pinage kit, a fuselage kit, a rib kit, a wing kit, uh, so that it's not so much all at once. Make sure you make your way to an air show and come and find Team Minimax and talk to Dave and see what you can do here. So. Or they can check us out on the web at TeamMinimax.com. TeamMinimax.com. That's great. Lots more information. I have uh, plenty of pilot reports about the teams uh, of an earlier era, but they're essentially the same aircraft, I'm assuming. Find a lot of that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for talking to Dave Cooper and myself here at AirVenture in the Fun Fly Zone. The Copper State Fly-In has been bringing aviation enthusiasts in the Southwest U.S. together since 1973. This year we are again thrilled to be hosting the Copper State Fly-In at the Buckeye Municipal Airport, KBXK, in conjunction with the Buckeye Air Fair. The dates for the fly-in are February 6 to 9, 2020. We anticipate that the 2020 Copper State Fly-In will break all of our previous attendance records. Admission and parking to the 2020 Copper State Fly-In and Buckeye Airfare are free, including the two-hour air shows on Saturday and Sunday. So make sure to join us for a weekend of free fun for the entire family. See light sport aircraft, experimental aircraft, ultralights, vintage and military aircraft, as well as action-packed demonstrations. Visit the many educational forums, aircraft displays, youth activities, or one of the over 100 vendors. Copper State Fly-In Inc. is a volunteer-run, non-profit organization dedicated to promoting recreational and general aviation through events, scholarships, and public education. Proceeds from the Copper State Fly-In help support scholarship programs for youth seeking careers in the aerospace industry. We look forward to seeing you, February 6 to 9, 2020, at the Buckeye Municipal Airport, 3000 South Palo Verde Road, Buckeye, Arizona.